All right, students. Scientific investigations, nature of science. How do scientists work? I want you to all to understand that you are all amateur scientists. I'm an amateur scientist, semi-professional, amateur scientist. Um, professional scientists right now are fighting the coronavirus, trying to make you a better iPhone. Uh, working on the 5G, working on broadband across the United States. Scientists are working to make your lives better and to understand the world around us. So how do scientists work? Let me put this on present. There we go. So how do scientists work? There are all of our wonderful SOLs. So if you ever want to know if you're getting your money's worth out of this class, I have the SOLs. Vocabulary. An experiment is an organized procedure to, to study something under controlled conditions. Experiments, normally we have quantitative data. Quantitative has an N in it for number. Easy way to remember that. An observation is the process of gathering information by using the senses. Qualitative data. Mo notice we both have, we have two types of data. Quantitative is numbers. Qualitative. Qualitative, L for letter, letter for words. We're going to talk about that more as we go on here. What are some types of scientific investigations? Experiments are done in a lab. We measure things with rulers thermometers, with stopwatches. Observations are mostly in the field and include model building. We build a scale model of how something's going to work. Uh, observations in the field, cloudy, rainy, overcast. You can't put a number on that so much. I can measure the temperature uh, over a hot plate. That's an experiment. But observations are done mostly in the field and include model building, but they are important parts of science. So here is a wonderful quantitative versus qualitative research. Please watch this video. There's probably a question in there someplace. So please watch that video in the near pod. So here we start seeing our scientific terms. Some of these might be familiar with to you. Some of them we're going to expand upon. The nice thing about science is every grade level we expand upon something a little more. You might say, well, I know about the scientific process. Yeah, but you know uh, this much. Now we're going to do this much. In high school, they do this much. It, it just keeps building upon itself. Hypothesis is a testable idea or explanation that leads to a scientific investigation. It is testable. It's an if-then statement. If I water my lawn once a week, for 60 minutes, then the grass will grow taller. It's testable. Independent variable. The factor that is deliberately adjusted in an investigation, it is called the IV. Next time we meet, we are going to watch someone do an awesome science experiment. And I'm going to show you that independent variable. In an experiment, you try to keep everything the same, except for one thing because that's what you're testing. That's the independent variable. The dependent variable is what you measure. The independent variable is what you change. The dependent variable is what you measure. If I keep a glass of water in the sunlight, then it will get warmer than the glass in the shade. The independent variable is where I put the glass. The glass has to be the same. The type of water has to be the same. The amount of time has to be the same. The only thing you're changing is putting it in the sun. And you measure it with a thermometer. That's the dependent variable. We will keep studying this all year long. But we like to introduce this first because we're going to do it all year long. Data, information ga gathered by observation or experiment. Observation is words, soft. Hot, a lot, a little, most. Experimentation is quantitative words. Seven, I'm sorry, word numbers. Numbers, seven, 12, 1.5, 3.14, negative two. Here's a super awesome video, how to make a hypothesis. Might be a question stuck in there, but pay attention. It's kind of cool to watch. So, 
These are notes if you were in my class last year. Hypothesis is an if-then statement. If I hold a radar gun at cars before a stoplight, then they will not go through the yellow light as often. That was actually a video. I didn't include that video this time. Me holding the radar gun was the independent variable, IV. It's what I changed. How many cars stopped or went through is the dependent variable. It is what is measured. Everything scientists do needs to be recorded. This is data. What are some scientific methods defining a problem? The question you want to answer must be clearly defined. If we do this to the coronavirus, then it will stop mutating. Kind of one of the big hypotheses right now. Um, the problem is we got to contain the control of coronavirus, but we got to do a hypothesis that we can test. Forming the hypothesis of making predictions, predict from past experience. What do we already know? Planning the investigation, the steps used to test your hypothesis. We're going to really dive into this next time, but I want to introduce this. It's just too much for one class period. Identifying variable, what is the one thing you will change and how will you measure it? Interpreting data, drawing conclusions. What are predictions and inferences? Predictions show possible cause and effect relationships. Plants need water to live. And inferences are, ex are explanations based on known facts. Example, plants absorb water through their roots. How are inferences and conclusions related? An inference is not a, flat, a fact. You need an experiment to see if your inference is correct, that gives you a conclusion. How are scientific methods used? Different situations require different methods. Scientific methods are used in different sciences. So here we have another slide. What makes a good scientific investigation? Repetition. Science can be repeated. If you can't repeat science, then it's not right. So if you do something over and over, that means it's a fact. It means it can happen. Scientists share what they have found in open communication. Uh, where do you find reliable scientific information? It's a big problem now. People can just start up a website and put anything they want on it, and people will believe it. Scientific journals, ac academic web pages, proper news organizations, NPR. Just straight facts. Um, might not be the facts that you want, but it's facts. Uh, you need to choose where you get your news, not by someone trying to sell you something or with a slant. you got to be careful about that. Your generation really needs to be good about determining, was this person just giving me information and I can make up my own mind, or are they making up my mind for me? Matching pairs. Good. We like this one. This one's pretty solid. So summing up, we have that information. So scientists' investigations are done in a laboratory or in the field. The hypothesis of an experiment must be testable. In an experiment, the variable that scientists plan to change is the independent variable. The results of an experiment are the data collected. If your classmate repeats an experiment that you have already conducted, that is an example of repetition. One way that the quality of scientific information is evaluated is that it's reviewed by peers. All right? All right, students, that's it. You're watching this. Is If you missed my class or you just really wanted to hear me describe this again. So um, do the quizzes. Do the Nearpod. Do the gym kit if you can. If not, you'll see some of these questions as we go on in the lesson. Thank you, students.